So this is where it starts. We're going to download Lightroom. I'm going to show you how to get yourself all set up. So stick around. I remember when I first got my camera. Um, I was excited to start taking pictures and I downloaded the program that came with the camera and I just went at it. I didn't really know what I was doing and I just tried to learn it, but it's very confusing. And um, I found myself getting frustrated and at the same time I would go online and try to figure out how to use the program I had that came with my camera and I kept seeing the term Lightroom come up. Adobe Lightroom, Adobe this, Adobe Photoshop, but Lightroom kept popping up. So I actually went on the Adobe site and to see what this was all about. And I was messaging with one of their reps and they asked, you know, how I'm going to be using the program and they suggested Lightroom. And I'm glad they did because it completely changed my photography. Um, it's one thing to get the picture in the camera right, but I was so amazed at what I was able to do with it afterwards. And seeing the changes that I could make to an image that I had captured in my camera really motivated me to get better at the photography end of it so that I could then create these really great finished photos. And what else is great about Lightroom? It's a way to just manage all your files too. Um, Eric and I take thousands of pictures every year. Every trip we come home with thousands of pictures. And you know, it's an easy way to have everything organized and right where I need them. And if I need to quickly jump back a couple of years to grab an image, I know where it is. But the other great thing about Lightroom is it's non-destructive. So what does non-destructive mean? Non-destructive means that um, once you have the image downloaded through Lightroom into your computer, it stays there. And Lightroom creates a small file for you to work on that's in the program and a set of instructions for each one of those files that it applies when you export it. So what's great about that is I can take an image that I shot you know, two or three years ago and revisit it. And if I want, I can reset it back to the way the camera shot it. I can create a copy of it and edit it completely differently. Or I can make multiple copies of it. Or maybe I have the same image and I love the way it came out, but I want to crop it four different ways. I want to make a square version or I want to make a, um, you know, a five by seven for my mom or, or you know, whatever it is that you're, you need to do it lets you do it. You don't have to worry about ruining an image or being able to get back to where you were. There's always a way back in Lightroom. Um, so that's that's probably one of the best things about it. And um, another thing I'll say about using this program before we go into the computer and I show you how to get going with it is when you're using your camera try to shoot in raw mode. Now you have to know your camera and you have to get into the quality settings menu inside your camera. And all cameras have this setting. Even your phone has it. Now most phones, or well, they might now actually, some of the newer ones, have our settings, you know, JPEGs, different size JPEGs, but you'll see RAW in there. It'll say RAW. And what that is is a digital negative, and that is basically giving you a file just the way your camera saw it. It's not compressing it. It's not processing it. It's not doing anything to it. But you're also getting all of the information nothing is being changed and you'll be able to have um, the most information to work with and you'll have the most leeway when you're editing um, to you know create the images that you want the cameras today have an amazing dynamic range and you can take an image that maybe you thought was garbage and you can really it's amazing what you can do with these images you, you know it, well when we get into the editing portion I'll show you exactly what we're talking about but it gives you the most control over your images and um, that's what you want. We're going to jump to the computer now and um, I'm going to show you how to go to the Adobe site, get it set up, get your images in and ready to be edited. Okay, so let's go. Okay, we're here at my computer and we're going to quickly go through getting from the Adobe site, getting the program into your computer and the basics of importing um, your first set of images. Not going to go through every single thing inside the program. I just want to let you know, like a quick workflow that'll get you, you know, from your memory card into the computer or from the files you have in your computer into Lightroom. So we're going to go 
I did an Adobe search and their website comes up. I click on Creative Cloud. Adobe site is going to come up here and then you're going to scroll down and you're going to have all the different Adobe programs here. But we're going to stop at Photography here. And they have the individual programs or the Creative Cloud plan, the monthly subscription, which is what we use and think it's a pretty good deal. For $10 a month, we get Photoshop, Lightroom CC, and Lightroom. So this is what Lightroom CC looks like. This is a mobile version of Lightroom that has cloud-based storage and a more modern interface. Um, Eric and I don't use this. We actually use the Lightroom Classic CC and Photoshop CC. Um, we don't use Photoshop that often, but it comes in the plan for $10, so it's a pretty good deal. Uh, Lightroom Classic and Photoshop are downloadable desktop versions of the editing program, so that's what we like to use. So you would click on Buy Now, and from here on in, you would put in your information and go through the process of downloading the program into your computer. And once you've downloaded it, and Lightroom is going to ask you if you want to open the program, so here is Lightroom opening up and as you can see some of the features inside Lightroom are customizable so just quickly you can right click on this identity plate up here in the left and you can edit it so you can create your own you can put your own watermark your own name whatever you like and you can change the colors and the fonts of all of this to kind of make it a little more personalized that's up to you so here we are in the library module. You're not going to have any images here. So what we're going to need to do is import some. So we're going to, bottom left hand corner, we're going to click the import tab. And then this window is going to pop up. Now, on the left hand side, it's going to show places that you can import images from. So I have my computer has two hard drives built into it. And then I have an external hard drive here. So if I wanted to just take pictures that I've already uploaded into my computer and get them into Lightroom to edit them, I could click this open, open my pictures folder. Um, and as you can see, I have everything organized by year. It just makes it easier to find things for me. And it's good to have a system in place before you do this where your images are organized. And then you can import them into Lightroom in an organized fashion so you can keep everything uh, locatable. So let's say I didn't have any of these in this computer. I would click on a, on a folder and import them into the computer. But I'm not going to do that because all of these are in here today, but this is how you would do it if you had images in. You import them the same way, whether it's your computer or a memory card, but I'm actually going to connect a memory card so you can see how you would get images from your camera. When you connect your memory card, a new import source is going to pop up. And now these are images I took with my Nikon D7000. So I'm going to click on those and they're going to show here in the window. And you can see what just happened there. Lightroom blacked out some of the images. Now these are images that have already been downloaded and Lightroom knows it. So it's not going to re-download them. And the reason it's not going to is because over here on the right, don't import suspected duplicates is checked. So what I'm going to do is just select a few of these to import now. So we're going to scroll through and I'm going to look at some images that maybe weren't downloaded yet and pick a group. Okay, so these, actually my wife was in California last year and she took a few sunset images in Palm Springs. So we're going to upload some of these. So I'm going to check the ones that I want to import. Okay, so we have a few here. Uh, these look like they're nice. So we're going to take these images. Okay, so we've selected our source, so the Nikon, that's where they're coming from. We've actually selected the images that we want to import, and now we have to choose how we're going to import them, what type of file. We can do it as a DNG file, which is an Adobe file, which is a little bit smaller and makes the program run a little bit smoother. Or we could use a, a copy, click that, and it'll import it exactly the way it comes out of the camera. So if they're raw files or JPEGs or however you shot them, that's how they're going to come straight across into wherever you put them. So I'm going to copy them as DNGs. This on the right hand side is the destination. So where are we going to put them? So when you click on this box in the top right corner of Lightroom, it's going to give you options. 
I have a folder that's called Pictures 2017 that I have already made. So I could click on that and then Lightroom will import the pictures there. If I wanted to create a new folder, I would click Other Destinations and my computer will open up and I can decide where I want to put them in my Pictures folder. You know, I could put them anywhere I want to put them. But I'm actually going to use this folder that's there already. Now under File Handling, Lightroom creates sample images that are what's shown to you when you work on them. So I use Minimal because it seems to make the program run quicker and um, you know this is where I'll be doing all of my editing. So right now I'm making a minimal size copy so we can work fast with it. We know that we're not importing any suspected duplicates because we have that checked off. And if I wanted to I can make a second, um, I can make a second copy somewhere else in my computer if I wanted to back it up or an external hard drive or you know another place if I wanted to have backups for it. I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, I can rename the files if I want. I have quite a few choices here. I always like to give it a custom name with the original file number. So for for this image I could call it 2017 California. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to apply any settings during import. Uh, I do all my editing afterwards. I don't have to do that. But let's say you were at a, 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 a shoot that was um, very controlled. Maybe you were shooting a model or a landscape that was the same and nothing really changed. And then when you got back home, you noticed that the white balance was off. You could apply that setting to all your images on import if you wanted to. Uh, I usually don't because I rarely have a set of images that are consistent. So I'll just make the edits as I go. And if you wanted to, you could also keyword the images here. So you could give them different names for different sets of images, you know, from the same shoot or to make it more easily findable. I don't generally keyword. I used to and I found that I never ever went back to look for those keywords. So I don't do it. Uh, but that's a preference. And this is where it's going. So we've already decided it's going into pictures 2017 in California. So now we click import. And it's going to bring those photos into the library module. And this is where all of your photos are going to live inside of Lightroom. So we've chosen, I think, about nine images. So it's going to import them and then it's going to convert them to DNGs. And a little window is going to pop up and tell us that it's done that. And then once that's done, the images are in Lightroom. Lightroom knows where they are and they're ready to be edited. So convert it to DNG. And here they are. Okay, now I have some other images that I had already downloaded into that folder. So if I click on it, all of the images are here now. So here's all the California images. So they're in here in my folder. And as you can see on the left hand side here, I have quite a few images inside of Lightroom. And these were all downloaded through the program so Lightroom knows where they are. So if we go back to that California image, if you look down here, there's something called collections. What's great about this is inside of this folder, now let's say there were 400 images in here and I just wanted a few of the sunset images to be separated out. What I can do is I can create a collection. So I'm going to highlight the images I want, hit the control key, I'm going to take these five of these six sunset images and I'm going to hit the plus mark here and I'm going to hit create collection. Now it's going to ask me what I want to call these and I'm going to call them California sunset. And I don't want to nest them inside another collection. I want it to be their own collection and I want to include the selected photos in my library here. So I hit create. Now Lightroom is just going to take a copy of these and now there's a selection here of California sunsets. So if I, I'm working in a different program and I need to quickly, not in a different program, in a different folder, and I want to quickly access those, I know so the, those seven sunset pictures are right here. And I can quickly get to them to edit them. So this is a, a great way if you're maybe on a vacation or a photo shoot or for whatever reason you have a large number of images and you want to create subsets of the images 
inside of Lightroom so that they're easier to access and work on in groups. Um, collections is a great way to do that. There's one more thing I want to talk about inside of Lightroom here, and that is moving images around. So you don't want to do anything behind Lightroom's back. The way to move images is to do it inside of Lightroom. So if I wanted to take this image right here, nice sunset, I'm going to take it by le left clicking on it, and I wanted to drop it into this cruising folder for some reason. Um, let's say I wanted to drop this into the Carnival Splendor folder that I have in here or just the cruising folder in general or any other folder that I have here in the navigating panel. I could just drop it in here and Lightroom is going to tell me that it's actually moving it in my hard drive. So Lightroom is going to take this image and in the background it's going to take it from one folder in my hard drive and move it to another. And that, I would say, okay, that's fine. Now, I'm not going to do that right now. Now, if I went into my hard drive outside of Lightroom and did the exact same thing, when I came back into Lightroom, I would click open my California folder, and this image would still be here, but it would be grayed out, and there'd be a question mark next to it because Lightroom doesn't know where it is anymore, and I would not be able to edit it or do anything with it until I found it. So by doing everything inside of Lightroom, I'm avoiding that. By doing this, you'll keep everything very organized and... Um, all your photos will be easily findable inside of the Lightroom program. You won't need to go outside of this for anything. And that's one of the reasons why we really love using it. And if you quickly wanted to jump into Photoshop, you could right-click an image, and it'll say Edit In. And the computer and Lightroom knows that Photoshop is installed on this computer, and it'll actually let me jump back and forth between the two programs. If you do things this way, it's a great way to keep everything organized and clean and simple inside of Lightroom. Okay, so that's pretty much it with the importing of images, getting the program in. And um, if you have any questions, you know, ask them in the comments. We'll get back to you. And if there's something we missed or something you don't understand, um, we're going to go next and discuss the different modules up here in the top library and uh, get you into the develop module and start talking about actually making some edits and what the basic panel does and, and, and how to actually start working with the images that you now have inside of the program. So now you're ready to start editing. And in the next set of videos, it's exactly what we're going to do. Um, we're going to work on some images. Uh, we'll start with the basics and get you to understand the tools and what they mean and the different terms inside of Lightroom. Um, and then from there, um, you can see how Eric and I edit our images and also how um, the different tools and different panels and adjustments that are in there um, affect your image in different ways. So uh, hopefully it's not too confusing. If it is, you can always ask questions in the comments or on Facebook or on Instagram or wherever you want to contact us. Um, we're happy to try to clear it up for you. Um, and uh, if you like the video, please click like. And if you like what we're doing here on the channel, please subscribe. Okay, the next one, we get into the basic panel and start editing.